cronies of the White House and the Pentagon and also visited the graves of war dead at Arlington National Cemetery. Paul Ryan will start airing some TV ads tomorrow, campaigning for a House term that he hopes he won't serve. While running for vice president, Ryan is also allowed to run for re-election to his House seat from Wisconsin, an office he would continue to hold only if he loses the vice presidential race. The Chicago Teachers Union says no deal has been reached in ongoing talks with negotiators from the Chicago Public Schools. Representatives from the union and the district returned to the bargaining table today as the teacher strike entered its second day. This is IRN USA Radio News. Views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff or management of KLAV. Welcome to Aspects of Writing with your host, James Kelly. For the next 60 minutes, we'll explore every aspect of writing, including how to create, format, and even sell your work. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's seven three one one two three zero or toll free one eight six six eight two zero K L A V. Now let's get right. Here's your host, James Kelly. Hello and welcome to Aspects of Writing. I'm your host, James Kelly. My guests today are Kim Wirtz, Jerry uh, Begley, uh, Tennille Jackson, and K C. Aspects of Writing broadcast live on KLEV 1230 on the AM dial. We also stream live on KLEV 1230AM.com. In addition, we can be seen live, be seen live on the internet at Google+, Twitter, Tumblr, WordPress, Facebook, and YouTube. Just go to youtube.com forward slash aspects of writing, all one word, and click on the featured button. To get today, my guests and I will talk about children's stories and illustrations. But before we get into today's show, I would like to introduce Jan Corsi. <laughs> uh, starting today uh, through December, I will be mentoring, mentoring Jan on the air um, in the beginning of each show, and the process will, will take over the course of the seven weeks. We're going to go all the way from formatting to printing and publishing your work, um, both for the, the written version and the internet, and without spending any of your own money out of your own pocket. As a matter of fact, our first guest on the phone today is going to be Eric Bowman, and Eric is the president of AuthR.com, which is a site that was designed just for authors to actually go out there and promote their books and get the money they need to, to get their project off the ground. Eric, are you there? I am. Eric, why don't you explain to our listeners a little bit about what we're doing for Jan? Um, sure thing. Um, first, thanks for having me on the show, Jan. You're welcome. Um, for, uh, the the author project um, is basically a way for people that want to become authors to raise money uh, for all aspects of writing their books um, via crowdfunding as well as via uh, book pre-sale. And for people that aren't familiar with crowdfunding, basically um, crowdfunding is where you go out and you solicit donations from individuals and those donations could be incentivized in a way where somebody could actually give you, say, $10 and you would provide them with a free copy of your ebook once you publish it. Right. So actually, well, the best way to do your crowdfunding would be through your own social networking as one, like through Facebook, Google+, Twitter. Sure. I mean, assuming that you have a, a fan or a follower base on Facebook and Twitter and even Google+, um, you could, once you have a author page set up, you could go out and, and use your, your URL that you're provided with to market that URL to your friends, friends, fans, and followers and then they can come back to the page and actually donate money directly to you. And the idea behind this is to actually raise all the funds you need to do your project from beginning to end. And the real reason why this is important is because of the fact that a lot of people can go out there and publish a book for almost nothing, but then you've got to promote it. You have to. How are people going to know your book's available if you don't have a way of promoting it? So in the budget we have for Jan, we've actually created a budget that actually involves a PR person so that she'll have someone to go out there and help her promote this work. Um, Eric, can you explain what we did for Jan? In fact, about we finished about two hours ago. A little bit of this. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, 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 I mean, of course, I'd like your opinion on it as well. But but setting up a book project was the first thing. And so Jan went to the author.com website, of a u t h r dot com, and created an account for herself. And then she went through the process of setting up a book project. And that's, the whole process up to that point is, is 
100% free. You can go in and create a free author page, which Jen did, and then create the book project, and then play around with it. You know, there's lots of little features and bells and whistles that you can play with. And then once you have your your book project created, then you activate the account. And, and of course, there's, there's a, a monthly fee involved or an annual fee involved in that. And then your book project goes live. Right, and that's when she can actually go after the crowdfunding. Yeah, it, you, you should get the public URL, which is uh, and also a short URL to make it easier to publish her 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 web address. Um, and and then once she publishes that to her Facebook and her and her Twitter and LinkedIn and Google Plus accounts, then people will click on it, discover her book, read her bio, read about the book that she's either writing or has written, and have, have then they have the option to donate different amounts of money. And I do want to go over a little bit with the listeners on what we've done for Jen because it's a little bit unusual for most authors. I mean, I helped an author publish her book uh, about eight, nine months ago, and we went after $3,500 in crowdfunding, and we did reach that goal. But we've gone a little bit higher with Jan because we're actually going to take this to the publicity level after the project is edited and published. So we've actually created a project that's a $12,000 goal, which is a hefty goal, but I think we can do this. What do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, a twelve thousand dollars is is a, a very hefty goal, as you put it. Um, but what's great about Author, unlike many of the other crowdfunding services, and there are a couple out there, um, is that no matter how much you raise, all the money that you do raise, even if you only raise a thousand dollars towards your twelve thousand dollar goal, is yours to keep. There's no there's no reason that it would be. Or we don't ask for the money. It, it, it remains in Jan's hands. Right. So the good thing about this as well is should she not make her goal, which we, we know she will, but should she not make her goal, then what um, could happen here is is that she'd have to cut back on something and can't, you know, would have to be realistic in that maybe she couldn't go for the publicity the angle that she was going after, you know. That's the glory of this 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 whole concept with you is that you you use what you have. You know, if you get it all, great, that's fantastic. But if you don't get all your crowdfunding, you still have money to work with. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the fact that you're going for, for what, what I consider a brass ring. $12,000 for a self-published book is, is a great deal of money, but it, it, it's good planning on your part because you're actually taking into account marketing, sales, PR, which most, most self-published authors never think about, right. even after the book fails to sell. Right, and that's the whole idea of this whole mentoring process is to show how we can, we can actually anyone can do this we're going to teach you how everyone to do this to go from the beginning to end and do it right because everybody publishes I've published two books myself but the point is is if you publish a book and you have no avenue which to sell that book you've done yourself no good whatsoever unless you're just doing it for yourself yeah I mean I, I, I made a point of saying to everybody that I talk to books are written to be read and if you can't sell your book, your, your book nobody's gonna read it and what's the point of writing it right so, Jan, what do you think about this? Well, I think we've hit the ground running. <laughs> <laughs> we seem to have our ducks in a row, and, and I'm really optimistic. And, and the, this website, the Author R, is, is really good, but I did need your help to get, get through some of it. So, maybe uh, Eric can help. Um, Eric, you actually more. have a, a thing on there where people can, they, um, they can actually contact you if they need to, or someone in your company, to help with the process, or... Yeah, absolutely. Not everybody has a James Kelly sitting, sitting next to them. And <laughs> Thank heaven. <laughs> oh, damn. Does. <laughs> but, but so, yeah, we, we have, uh, there, there's a uh, certainly a contact form, an email address, uh, and even a way that you can leave voicemail for us or, or call us directly, and somebody here will be able to help anybody go through the process of, of setting it up. And we're continually trying to improve things. So And, and something that you guys ran into today, we've already resolved and nobody else will ever run into that issue again. Okay, see, that's the, so it actually helps you when someone has a problem and they contact you. Yeah, I mean, Author is a very small company, and, and we're, we're all about customer service, and, and we, we, we are, we, we're going to retain you as a client if we're not satisfying your needs. Right. And so we want your book to be published, and we want your book to, to be read. And so all the steps that we have involved in, in the Author website should do that, and if not, then we're here to help. Uh, and I do. I'd like to add, not not to, to cost you any money here, but anyone who uses aspects of writing as a promo code, they get a discount through your company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get fifteen percent off, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it, I mean, it certainly adds up. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And, and let me just say, the only reason I said I'm glad everybody doesn't have a James is because I need you and I'm selfish. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Eric, thank you so much, and we're going to touch base with you in a few weeks. I know you're getting ready to take a trip, so when you get back, just give us a call, and we'll have you back on. Perfect. Uh, and, and best of luck, Jim. Thank, thank you, you so sir. much. Thanks, Eric. Bye, guys. I, uh, if, um, let's see, please tune in every Tuesday at 2 o'clock here on KLAV, um, and you can go to klav1230am.com on your computer to follow Jan's progress, and at the end of the series, we'll be announcing the location and the time of our first book signing and book launching. In a minute, Kim Wirtz, uh, Jerry Begley, and Tonil Jackson, and KC will be telling us a little bit about themselves, but I'd like to start off the show with a few fun quotes, and Kim, are you on the line? Hi, hey, James. Hi, Kim, how are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Oh, you're welcome. Are you feeling well today? I'm good. All I'm right. Good. Kim just had three surgeries, so she's a, she's a trooper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. Kim, would you like to start with number one? I will. C.S. Lewis said, a children's story that can only be enjoyed by children is not a good children's story in the slightest. All right. And Casey, how about number two? Dr. Seuss is quoted as having said, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself any direction you choose. That's very profound. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read number three. People think, hey, I love kids. I want to write children's books. But they think children are happy. That's their first mistake. A quote from Mo Williams. Uh, Tonil, are you there? Hi. How are you doing, Tonil? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing great. Would you like to read number four? How are you doing, um, James? <laughs> I'm doing great. so great. So glad to be on the show today. Oh, thank you. Um, with, the, with this book, Four Girls, A Lot of Choices, it's actually a book that I wrote um, about my four girls, Autumn, Ariana, Angel, and Jeriah, and just my trials and smiles, as I say and parenthood and yeah. everything that I had to go through in raising them. And I just felt like when I wrote that book, it would pretty much just be sharing with other parents and caregivers in general and give them some experience that they could also, you know, relate right. to. So that's pretty much where I came in with Four Girls Without a Choice. It was my second book. The first book I wrote was a relationship yeah. book. Well, we're going to get into, we're actually going to get into that in a few minutes. We're going to actually have you on in your own segment. Do you have the uh, the script in front of you for the quotes? Yes. How would you like to read number four? Yes. Hold on one moment, and sure. I'll pull it right. No up. problem. Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this one. This is a quote I believe is a favorite of KC's. It's by B. F. Skinner. Uh, yeah, I know this is on your website. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't teach great books. We should teach a love of reading. And Tony, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Yeah. Did you get number four? Number four is any book that helps a child to form a habit of reading to make reading one of his deep and continuing needs is good for him. That's from Maya Angelou. Yes, that's a great quote. Jerry, are you there today? Yes, I am. Hi, James. Hi, how are you doing? Fine, thanks. I'm, I'm broadcasting from the lobby of the Hotel Colorado here in, in Colorado. Fantastic. All right. Yeah, so anyway, do you know how to say in Spanish, please don't vacuum so close to my phone? <laughs> <laughs> We're doing good. Yeah, okay. You guys are going to go and tell it right now. <laughs> Jerry, would you anyway. like to take number five? <laughs> yeah, number five. Louis Lamore once wrote, Actually, all education is self-education. A teacher is only a guide to point out the way. And no school, no matter how excellent, can give you education. What you receive is like the outlines in a child's coloring book. You must fill in the colors yourself. That is so true. I mean, you know, it's one thing to have the teacher there, but you have to have a little bit of ambition to learn. Um, Absolutely. If you are just tuning in, you are listening to Aspects of Writing with me, your host, James Kelly, here on KLAB 1230 on the AM dial in Las Vegas, or on your computer, you can find us on the internet at klav1230am.com. My guests are Kim Wirtz, Jerry Bigley, uh, Tennille Jackson, and KC. 
As we go along, if you have questions for the panel, please call us locally at 702-731-1230, or if you're out of this area code, you can reach us at 1-866-820-5528. My first guest is author Kim Wirtz. Kim began writing as a teenager. Her first poem was published in Bitterroot, a, a national poetry journal in New York. Kim's work was chosen for review during a campus writing s symposium while in college, and it was chosen by Stephen Spinder. And T.S. Eliot, he was a friend of T.S. Eliot's, and he's also a writer. She has been a teacher, a strategic planner for small businesses, and a grant writer. In 2009, Kim was downsized from a marketing position and decided it was time to do what she loves best, thus taking her marketing and business skills and becoming a freelance author. So, Kim, what have you been up to lately? Well, James, and at panel, and everyone, hi again, other than laying around the house eating a little jello after my surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Professionally, um, I've just uh, uh, finished a children's book, another children's book called Bug and the Bird, mm -hmm. with uh, illustrator Lori Boxing worked on that with me, and uh, that should be up uh, by, well, I'm just kind of saying everything September 30th right now. I've got... Um, I'm in the middle of writing a novel series. I'm on my third in the series. It's called Life at Mimosa Lake. It's uh, spiritual fiction for women. And so I'm working on the third book on that. Um, the other two are, are up. The second one was just last summer, about a month and a half ago. And uh, I'm teaching, still doing some tutoring. And I do uh, kind of what you're doing with Dan, you know, writing. And, and I do some editing for some other writers. And you do some babysitting. What is that noise there? I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I guess it's the baby somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not on your end. It's not on your end, huh? <laughs> so uh, so basically it's uh, you know, it's a, it's kind of a mix. It's a beautiful mix for me between writing and then some teaching getting out there and editing and uh, my own workout. Uh, and then, of course, uh, James, as you all were just talking about, market, 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 market. Yes, that's so important. So, uh, the books are all getting ready to go to print on Amazon. I'm switching printers. So uh, that should be done by the end of September. And I'll be, that, that, so that'll be a relief off if anybody who knows how that all works goes. What is your children's story about? Um, the newest one. The first two that I've written, the, the Old Oak Tree, which was the first book I wrote, um, actually in 2009 as I was being laid off, I was working on it for my niece. And, and this one is really about kind of a just kind of an intro to nature for young young children. I um, used to teach very young children and uh, and their parents, and so it's a it's a, it's this one's about uh, birds' lives from a bug point of view, from the different bugs and birds that are kind of around their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. The next two I'm working on out next year, and uh, actually the stories are done, but it's it's melding as every every picture book author and illustrator knows melding the illustrations with the pictures. Um, it'll be Polka Dot Chloe, and that's the story of a girl, a uh, esteem story, uh, and her relationship, how she discovered it. And so that one's out next year, and then one called The Lumberjack's Breakfast is about a um, lumberjack who's eating his breakfast and interacts with the uh, animals in the woods who don't want him to cut the trees down. Ah. That's so this cool. out next year. So the first two that I have out right now, Old Oak Tree, it all happened at the Old Oak Tree, and Bug and the Birds are more basically about, the Old Oak Tree is about animals um, that come to the Oak Tree and what they do, and Bug and the Birds is about birds from Bug's Eye View. So. Well, and now I, you know, I, will, I have your links posted on my website, but just so that the listeners know, where can people find out more about your work? Um, probably the best place to start is KS Words. Uh, dot com is my website, and then I would say the usual Facebook, Twitter, Amazon uh, pages. I'm on Barnes and Noble author pages. Uh, I'm on Blogspot, ksworthsblogspot.com. I'm in LinkedIn, um, Twitter. I don't, you know, look around, but probably the the best place where you can start to get me, and if you want to contact me. Um, it's KS Worth at, at Yahoo, uh, but that's all on the website. Okay. All my contact here, information and phone, everything's on the website. So. Okay, well, if y'all. I can find books through the website if people request that. That's how I do that. So. All right. Well, Kim, we're going to keep you online because we're going to have a panel discussion here in a minute, but I want to introduce everyone else. My next guest is Jerry Begley, and he lives in Marble, Colorado, and with his family. He's an illustrator and a cartoonist. Jerry, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, first off, I gotta tell you, I, it was kind of ironic you, you picked me for the Louis L'Amour 
um, quote, because on my August 22nd blog, it was about me being a Western, Western writer, and I got a stupid photo of me where I look just like Louis L'Amour, so that was kind of ironic on that. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, well, I'm the father of seven uh, pretty crazy little kids, uh-huh. and I do have I, I have a comedy blog at jerrybegley.com. I'm a freelance cartoonist. I've been doing that for many, many years right now. Uh, I've done a little comic strip action there and illustrated some books and some pop culture items and stuff. Whatnot. My current project is uh, called Dad of the Tooth Fairy Didn't Come, and it's a children's picture book. Uh-huh. And, uh, boy, it's, it's, it's um, a topic that everybody, every parent in the world relates to. When I start talking with people, they say, oh, yeah, we forgot the tooth fairy. Oh, we forgot the tooth fairy. You know, so they, they start uh, playing their stories on me. So, anyway, it's kind of a self, it's like an autobiography because uh, with seven kids, you can imagine I yes. forgot the tooth <laughs> fairy. <lot> of tooth. <laughs> Actually, during the writing of the book, I probably forgot the tooth fairy, fairy maybe over a dozen times or something like that. <laughs> oh, taking place. Um, the book, I illustrated it myself, having, you know, being a cartoonist. And um, I didn't intend it to look like anything Dr. Seuss. I think a lot of people say it's, it reminds them of Dr. Seuss because of the wackiness and the colors are really, really vivid colors. I was uh, influenced a lot by, you know, Warner Brothers and Dr. Seuss and whatnot earlier, on, later, earlier in my life. We'll talk about that later, of course. Uh, here's a fun thing about the book, though is that uh, it's the world's first children's picture book to be compiled and edited using on-site solar and wind energy. Wow. Way cool. And that's up in my house. My art studio is being put together. I actually finished the the, uh, book before finishing my house. But don't ask how that worked. But anyway, (laughs) pretty cool stuff. So So that's kind of where we are right now. It's a totally green book, it sounds like. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's got several, it's got three different certifications on it. It's got the green circle certification and the uh, FSC certification. And I guess the thing I'm really proudest about the most, and it costs more to do it this way, but uh, the book meets the CPSIA requirements for use by children 12 years old or younger. And that just means that it's, uh, basically, they could eat the book and it wouldn't kill them. Oh, okay. Now, see, there's something I did not know. Um, yeah. Now, Jerry, anyone who wants to find information about that book, they can go to jerrybigley.com? Absolutely. B-E-G-L-Y, yeah. Okay. All right. My next guest is Tamil Jackson, and Tamil is the author of a children's book ty- entitled Four Girls, A Lot of Choices. And Tamil, you gave us a little bit about your information. Can you give us some idea of what inspired you to write this book? You know, like just being a mom, um, being a mom of of the four girls in and of itself, because as I stated earlier, it's just really a reflection of motherhood, what motherhood has been like for me. And I just know that other parents feel the same way. So whether you're a dad like Jerry or, you know, mom, you can identify with the different experiences that parents go through, you know, and seeing your children grow up and develop, that's something that you can identify with. So that's pretty much what led me or inspired me to write this book. Mm-hmm. So, and you've written another book as well, I believe, correct? Right. The first book that I wrote was actually a relationship book, and it's called uh, Pleasing Your Partner, Spiritual Guide to Happiness. And that's uh, pretty much geared toward relationships. It's biblically based, so it's a spiritual book. A lot of times when people hear the first part of it, they take it wrong. They think it's a sexual book, but it's not sexual at all. Just giving traits that uses that acronym to elaborate on how you can um, institute those traits to enhance your relationship. Mm-hmm. And you actually do seminars, I believe, on that? Yes, yes, I do. Do I do conduct relationship seminars. Yes, I do. Okay. And where can someone learn more about your books? Well, they can go to, um, for, for pretty much both of the books, because I have two different sites, but to get everything, you can just go to tenilstodos.org. That's T-O-N-E-A-L-S. T O hyphen D O S dot O R G um, because in addition to being an author, I'm also a life coach, and so uh, some of the different aspects that I coach on are relationships and parenting, along with time management 
and writing. Okay, well, we're going to move on here, and I'm going to introduce KC here in a minute. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Aspects of Writing with me, your host, James Kelly, here on KLAV 1230 on AM in Las Vegas. And on your computer, you can find us on KLAV 1230AM.com. My guests are Kim Wirtz, Jerry Bigley, uh, Tamil Jackson, and KC. And Jan's hanging out with us in the studio today as well. Um, my next guest joins us. He's joining us in the studio today. He simply goes by KC. He is the author of Hanging with Casey, children's book series. Uh, Casey, please give us a little bit about your background and your projects. Well, thanks for having me in here today. Um, my background, I, I come from the city, uh, back east. Um, I've been out in Las Vegas. I returned to Las Vegas in 2006. I've always thought of myself as a writer, but I began to do it uh, professionally, if you will in 2009 or early 2010 um, I started writing children's books because um, like with everyone they want their work to be meaningful mm -hmm. they, they want it to mean something and I was researching literacy rates in the cities and in this country and I found that they were horrible they were terrible. Um, so my books have a twofold purpose. One, I want them to be entertaining and enjoyable. Uh, and secondly, I'm bringing attention. I want to bring attention to uh, illiteracy in this country. Right. And you, I actually have gone to your website. You have a great website, way, and your illustrations are fantastic. I have, yes, I have a really, really good team that I'm working with. So, and you're going to be, you're actually, you're getting a little bit of exposure for your books right now. You have, how many do you have total? You have two published. I actually, well, technically I have four published. Okay. Uh, my books are in both English and Spanish. Okay. Um, volume one is uh, My Cousin and Me. Uh, volume two, I Visit the Zoo. Um, and... Those, again, are in, in Spanish, too. And um, I have 15 books written, okay. which I will periodically release. Okay. So we are working on um, Volume 3, which should be out, I'm thinking, probably early spring. Okay. Yeah. So you have a, an ongoing series with these I characters. have an ongoing series. And the way I structured my series is... It will always be ongoing as mm -hmm. long as there are, are things that children enjoy or have questions about or experience. And as um, Jan and I already know, you get inspired by a lot of different things because we were in the conference rooms <laughs> talking before we came on air, and you can just you find anything, and you can you find anything, yeah. right? Yeah. So even hair, even hair, <laughs> even hair. <laughs> <laughs> even <laughs> hair. Well, that's a book. Well, that's right. a book. Coming down the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm still um, wondering what to, uh, how to do that one, or what actually to do with it. It's already written, but uh, yeah, even hair. Uh, um, <laughs> now, your books are illustrated by Ricky Scott Holmes. Um, how did you come to meet, and how did he get involved with your illustrations? Uh, Ricky Scott, friend and colleague. Uh, we met him through a really good mutual friend, uh, Lamont Smothers, who happens to be a math teacher. Um, but Lamont was, was someone that I was showing my work to as far when I was discussing I wanted to to get this published and, and make this a reality and he said you know I got a guy for you of course it was Ricky Scott uh, Rick is, is extremely talented not just saying that but extremely talented and he's got to be one of the easiest guys there is to work with. I uh, went through a lot of illustrators. They were talented too in their own right, but you know, if anyone knows, putting together a children's book, uh, you know, you run across a lot of talented illustrators, but it's it's being able to work with them. And they have to see your vision the way you 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 see it. They have got to respect your uh, vision exactly. Uh, so sometimes you'll run across illustrators that tell you what you want and that wasn't the case with Rick also with Rick he, he comes from a major metropolitan area too mm -hmm. back east 
And that was the feel that I wanted my books to have. Mm -hmm. um, that look from a certain era. And he, he was right in sync with what I was talking about. And Casey, we can learn more about your books at www.hangingwithcasey. That's H A N G I N W I T H K A S E Y dot com. Correct. All right. Um, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Aspects of Writing here on KLAV 1230 on the AM dial. And you can also listen to us live at KLAV 1230 AM.com. I would like to ask everyone on the panel um, how many, is everyone here self published or does anyone have a major publisher? Or what? Casey, I know yours is self-published. Um, Jerry? Self-published. Self-published. Tamil? I'm self-published as well. Okay. Self-published. Kim, Kim, I know Kim, we were talking, yours is self-published. And that's kind of interesting because it seems to be the way of most authors today. You know, they're going... Um, now, I, I happen to know that the, the young lady who introduced me to KC happens, you know, she, she's actually been an author on our show and she does have a major publisher. So it's interesting how no matter how we get published or where we are in the, in the, in the, in the um, community as far as writing goes, we, we can still interact. That sure. is kind of interesting. <laughs> so, Well, I, I think that the self-publishers, you know, they still have the fire for literature and mm -hmm. writing and creativity. Um, when you start dealing with these major publishers, you very quickly see that it is just a business to them, mm -hmm. uh, which which can be a little disheartening uh, because it, well, it's almost like the music industry. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you look, you listen to some of these people. How are these people on the radio, or how are they selling CDs? When there's other people that are way more talented, talented sure, yeah. you know. Um, but unfortunately. The major publishing houses are, are a part of the conversation, and eventually, um, that's that's an avenue that that you want to explore. Well, that's what's interesting too. Even when you're a self-published author, you still have that dream of being picked up by a major publisher yeah. somewhere down the yeah. road. Mm -hmm. Now, Kim, I know that that you also did not want to go the route of the major publisher. Can you give me a little bit? Of, you know, give. Yeah. Um, Went that route. I had a book picked up by a publisher, and um, I went that route. It's a book of uh, short stories for teens, and I was with them for two years, and um, back and forthing, and working and redoing marketing plans and redoing editing on the book, and finally, um, actually, I kind of drew a line in the sand because it was two years, and I felt like that was long enough to kind of go around in circles, and. Um, I would call my publisher and she'd pick up and I'd end up with like three more things to do, which is fine, that's the way that goes. Mm -hmm. But then I didn't see progress being made. And so I decided that I wanted to uh, um, take back control of that book and was able to do that with everything, with contractually and everything. And um, for me, it, uh, I would like to go the publisher route, but I, I'm also very independent as a person. And I'm very... Um, scheduled and timelined and all that, and I just didn't see a lot, a lot of progress. I saw a lot of help in the editing process, mm -hmm, right. but in the end, I found that in the end, no matter what, whether you go publish your route or not, you're out there marketing your own book. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. And so for me then, um, controlling the content that's attached to my name um, has become more important. Well, well and the time elements involved here as well, because you shared with me the, the, earlier this week that you um, actually um, well, it took almost what eighteen months to get your first book out there or something. Yeah, yeah, and uh, well, yeah, from the time that I I started, well, that that's also because I did illustration, but, but it takes me an average, like with my novels, it, it's a year to write them and to get them out there. But I also use editors. I don't. Um, I don't, you know, just write it and, and uh, put it out there. I, I have a group of readers um, for my children's books and re a review groups and things like that. So I try to put in there kind of the best of two worlds of what a publisher would do um, by having my books go to review groups and to editors and, you know, so that I'm not, I'm not alone. Because I, I do think that you, uh, I don't think you can edit your own work totally and have it. And I want my product out there to be really as, the best I can be at that. Right. You know, right. so, so I like control. I'm a control freak. You know, so <laughs> now Jerry, you're a cartoonist, and so you have 
And a control freak. And a control freak. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You already answered the question before I asked it, then why did you self publish? <laughs> Uh, I'm a control freak too. I, I had some interesting advice uh, a year or so ago. Someone said, Jerry, at the point at which a uh, big house wants to pick up your work, that means you've already arrived. And why would you want to give them control over your stuff when you've already gotten to that point of uh, you know having a good product? And and this book, uh, my book, The Other Tooth Rate Income, I think it's really high quality stuff and it's kind of fun. I think it's the type of book that people are going to have on their shelves for years and years and years. So um, it's sort of fun to have that control freak aspect of it. Well, By the way, yes, a real, real quick aside, I also am a cave tour guide. Okay. And cave tour guides are real control freaks. We tell people, here, you stand over there and recite the <laughs> alphabet in German while the rest of the group comes into the cave, you know, type stuff. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we're going to move into now what it takes to write a children's story, but I'd like to, yes, go ahead. You, you know, James, I just wanted to say that these big publishing houses, mm -hmm. there will come a time where you, you will need them. For example, New York Times won't review your book unless you're with a major publishing mm -hmm. house. Okay. Or if, let's just say, someone wants to, to make a film mm -hmm. about your your book, okay. you know, they, you have there are certain channels well, that, that are... But in today's industry, when it comes to, and I know a little bit about the, the independent motion picture industry, right. it isn't quite that way today. You can find um, you know, independent production companies who are willing to take on your work, and believe not, a lot of those have turned into successful films. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, absolutely, and I'm not insinuating it won't be successful. What I'm saying is, you know, if, if you're going after some, the major, if you're going after the big, the big prize, you know, it's going to come a time where you're going to have to cross paths with one of these major publishing houses. It's just inevitable. Yeah. Well, um, one, one thing, though, that we, we, we should enlighten people on is the fact that if you have an agent, that's a, that's a big thing. you got to have an agent. If you get an agent, that can open doors for you as well, Absolutely. just as much as a major publishing house. Yeah. But that's not easy to get either. Especially for children's literature. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, I'm going to read a little bit here from... Um, wikihow.com states the following, writing a children's story requires a vivid imagination, good speech, enthusiastic creativity, and the ability to put yourself in the mind of a child. To write children's stories, follow these guidelines. And I'm going to let Jan start with number one here. Brainstorm story ideas. The story is perhaps the most important aspect of any good book. Consult some of your favorite books, children's and otherwise, for inspiration. But do what is right for you. And I found that is so true even with my book because every time I get somebody say, well, I like that, but you should have maybe said this instead. Right. You really have to go with your own heart. Choose a story that fits your interests and talents, such as action, fantasy, or mystery. If you have children, involve them in the brainstorming session. Say something like, what if you had to make your kitten go to bed and she didn't want to? What would you say? Or, what would a dog do to avoid eating his vegetables? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> what their minds will come up with uh, may send you into fits of laughter or even a whole new direction and level the creativity. And did anyone on the panel go through this when writing the children's stories? Jerry, you sort of did because you said you were in the process of, you had teeth being lost as you were writing the story. I didn't even have to brainstorm. I was sitting at the breakfast table. My daughter came running out of the room and screaming, Dad, the tooth fairy didn't come. And I jumped up and ran over to the phone right away. My wife said, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to call the tooth fairy people. And I stopped. And I stopped and thought, this would make a killer kid's book. And that's where I came with mine. Very oh. clever. Now you're going to have to come up with a whole tooth fairy hotline and everything. You can really promote this. <laughs> Santa Claus, Easter Bunny. Uh, Kim, what about you? As far as brainstorming goes, uh, when I did Old Oak Tree, I actually did it for my niece. I have, I know further, um, in, so we're going to talk about it a little bit later, have someone in mind, and um, I actually did it for her. I thought, you know, what do little city children, she lived in Chicago at the time, uh, know about the tree and uh, uh, what goes on at a tree in their backyard, who visits there, what's there, on and on. So uh, I started with that, and then... Uh, kind of grew from there, and, and uh, actually with the book that's just coming out, um, we kind of, my illustrator, 
um, it led to her illustrations to light for the first book we were talking about, so I kind of wrote to her illustrations a little bit. So I think it's a blend with children's books, but always you have to brainstorm your story ideas and your, you know, and your plot to make sure that it's interesting, you know, to your reader, who your reader is. Yeah, and uh, Tennille, I know you did the same thing with your children. Yeah, pretty much. My my children were my story. <laughs> so it's really just, you know, observing them and writing down conversations and mental notes on things that they said over the years. And that's what, what made up my story. So they, yes, uh, definitely I find them, their inspiration being what gave me the name for my story. All right, we're going to move on here. I'm going to let um, Casey's going to read number two on what we need to do to write a children's story. Develop your characters. To have a good story, you need some interesting characters. Who is the main character of the story? Is there more than one? Are the characters human, animal, or fantasy? Or do they include elements of all three? Before you begin, make an outline of the characters and how they fit into the story. You can also take a cue from J.R.R. Tolkien or J.K. Rowling's and create an entire world that your characters inhabit. Even if a lot of that does not appear in your story, it will inform your characters and help their actions make sense overall, even if it's nonsense, as long as it fits into the framework of the world you've created. I think this is very important. In developing characters, whether you're writing children's stories or fictional novels or even memoirs, you know, even with the characters that you have in a memoir, you have to make sure that, that you maintain that character. Um, because if you start talking about someone in a different perspective then you know who are they talking about now you know so I think sure. it's important to when you develop your characters that you maintain those characters Jerry how about how about, how do you feel about this well uh, I think it, I agree entirely on that uh, in my book yeah the tooth fairy didn't come I have a character who's a substitute tooth fairy named Carl and what it really looks like is he is uh, he's a part-time tooth fairy uh, he looks like he really should be a plumber or something like that you know 55 <laughs> year old guy kind of balding he has a little tool belt on him, but he, he's a tooth fairy. He ties the wings on and does the thing. So uh, I kept him kind of interesting, kind of off balance the whole time in the book. You know, he really is really out of his league, and he shows all the way through the story. And I'm going to ask you if you'd like to read number three. Yeah, I'll, I'll read number three. All right. Make sure your writing is age appropriate. For example, smaller children enjoy stories with simple or non-existent plots and plays on words. For example, a repeated phrase like, no, no, fat, cat, scat, scat, scat. On the other hand, older children will want a more intricate plot and a tone that treats them like they're not children. Since it's harder to put oneself in the mind of a very young child, consider some of these guidelines and, and example story themes for very young readers. And here they are, age three to five. Use sentences with a low level of complexity that explains the motivation behind actions shown on the page. Themes include adventures, getting lost, and finding your way home, going to bed, fighting, being brave, sharing, telling the truth, thinking of others before yourself, explaining how you feel, learning how to spell, adding, learning to add, telling parents if someone hurts you or makes you feel bad, how to resolve arguments, disappointment, boy, that was a big one in my book, Yeah. or, or dealing with the loss of a parent, brother, or sister. Uh, with ages five to seven years, here's what you do. Use bigger words, but be careful to explain them so as not to frustrate new readers. At this point, books can be long enough to read over two or three nights. Themes that you can use might include overcoming challenges, learning new skills, understanding good reasons to do something, and bad reasons to do something, magic or confusion. You can also tickle their nascent rebellious streak with stories about running away from home and joining the circus, flying an airplane, or sneaking a popsicle. Well, does anyone have any comments on this quote? I totally agree with it um, because, like, for example, when you're trying to market, we were talking about being self-publishers. That's one of the biggest things for us is marketing. So it's so important to know who you're not just writing for the uh, appropriate age, but targeting that audience as well. Um, like my book is geared more so toward, like, probably preschoolers up to second graders. And so to try to 
get somewhere and sell my book to someone that's older or even as uh as Jerry was reading when you try to write if I'm trying to get my nine nine year old to read something that's appropriate for my three year old it's just not gonna work you know because she's gonna get bored and vice versa so I think right. that is very important to have like right in that age appropriate right if you're just well, in, oh I'll go ahead go ahead Casey you know when when writing age appropriate is is of course what you have to do for the people who intend you intend to uh, to read the the book. But at the same time, when I was doing when I was writing my books, mm -hmm. um, oftentimes for beginning readers, the parent is going to have to read the book to the child on occasion or first to get books, them right. into the the habit of reading. So when I was writing when I were when I was writing my stories, I was sitting there thinking, is a parent gonna sit here and read this and say, This is stupid. Why am I reading this? This makes no <laughs> sense. This is you know, he wouldn't do that or no, I don't want you know, so oftentimes, yeah, it's for a three year old, a four year old, a five year old. Right. But there are other people that will have to endure your story I, or your product. Casey, there's only one thing I have to say about this. Do you know how many parents that I have heard say, I have to listen to this Barney again? <laughs> but kids like Barney. But, but by that same rationale, why can't you have a product that parents love to read to their children? <laughs> you and can. So, right, but I'm so, just letting you know there are some stories out absolutely, there. Absolutely. Yeah, but that's what I'm. Well, that's what I was saying when it comes to the story and the illustrations. And if you look at the illustrations in my book, mm -hmm. the illustrations are not for the children. They are for the parent reading the book to the child, because there's going to be things in there children have no idea what they are. But th th actually, uh, you, th you made a good point there. It's a valid point. But at the same time, your your illustrations are geared towards children, though they definitely have that characterization. My, my illustrations are geared towards children because of the way the the characters look mm -hmm. and the way the colors right. are and the way it's constructed, but. You know, most children don't know what an Atari is. Most children don't know what that thing is on top of right. the TV. That's an antenna. Yeah. Telephones, what are those? Yeah, yeah. You know, so my book is set in 1980. Mm -hmm. And I want parents, when they're looking at it, to say, oh, wow, I remember those. I remember doing that, you know, mm -hmm. so that they can enjoy right. the experience it, it, it as much as the child. Exactly. Because a lot of these books, if you just slap a few characters on there with some bright colors, the kids are going to like it, as yeah. long as the story is entertaining. When I looked at the uh, illustrations, my first thought was Bill Cosby. I could see Bill Cosby yeah, too. reading yeah. this book. Yeah, me as well. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's, you know, I, when I was visiting, envisioning my pride, I was wondering, if a, a child goes and gets the book, what is the parent's reaction going to be to that book? And that's how I kind of uh, created and, and my and product. That's, and in essence, you are selling to the adult. You're selling to an adult. Well, actually, and there is a point to that as well, it. because when they go, you're the ones right. They're the ones who go to the bookstores and they buy it. Right. They go online and buy it. Sure. That's right, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And is this something that, yeah, okay, yeah, we got another Casey book coming out. Of, oh, uh -huh. I have to read that thing again, you know. <laughs> well, Kim, since you're online, I'm going to ask you if you'll read number four. Sure, be happy Make a story outline. It says it's necessary. Kim's uh, editing it. It is necessary. Connect <laughs> 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 your writing for a very young age level. Kim disagrees her. Where it's appropriate not to have a traditional plot. <laughs> Example, Good Night Moon. It's wise to carefully plan the story structure in advance. Use note cards, draw it in picture form, or write a standard outline. The most important thing is to have a general understanding of the beginning middle and end of the story, and of how the characters will interact and evolve. A good story usually has some sort of conflict or obstacle that the main character has to resolve, after which everyone lives happily ever after. Here's the breakdown. Introduce your characters with descriptions of physical and personality traits, their surroundings, and those with whom they come in contact. Create a problem, problem or conflict. This could be between two people an internal conflict, or one in which the main character overcomes an obstacle in the outside world. Write the climax of the story, which will include the main characters coming face-to-face -face with the conflict. 
show how your characters character characters resolve the problem and what happens next. Well, I think almost everyone writes in that manner. I know, Jerry, your book is that way. I haven't seen your book yet, Tanil. Um, how is yours any role in that plot line? Well, yeah, you know, yeah. mine. Um, I'm sorry. No, what I was going to say is on the Dad the Tooth Trade income, we, we resolve the conflict, and then that actually allows us to go on into the book, and at the very, very last page, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, you don't know what's going on between these two characters. It's like, oh, I thought I had this figured out. And the very last page, it's a bit of a surprise. So it's kind of fun. It kind of leaves you just a little bit wondering. It's it's pretty cool. Uh -huh. But it is, re it is resolved. The, the problem is resolved. Okay. I, I'm gonna, we're running out of time a little bit, so I'm going to uh, read a uh, couple more of these. Make sure your writing has flair. Use humor when possible for young children. Focus on silly things that have both the children and the adult reader laughing together. And what, that's a point you make, Casey, is that you want the, the adult to have it. Then I'm going to skip down here to consider whether or not to add pictures. If you're a professional illustrator, adding your own artwork can add to the interested level of the story and make it easier to follow. However, if you're not a professional illustrator, publishers most likely won't be interested in your design ideas and replace them with images created by another illustrator. And I also have written children's stories. They have not been published. I have two. And one of the problems I ran into with major publishing houses was the fact that I had started illustrations yep. and they said they would have, they had their own illustrators. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and Jerry, I know that's why you, you did your own because you, and yeah. because you, you like what you've done, obviously. Yeah. And yeah. Um, Kim, what about for you and Tanil? Well, I actually illustrated my own book as well. So, uh, mine is a, a combination of actual digital photos with artwork. So, it's a combination of the two. And I actually have a second book that's in production that I am working with the uh, publishing house. And they're going to do the uh, pictures this time. So, I'm really uh, anxious to see how it's going to work out this time because it's going to be different. Where, like I say, the first time I did them all myself, this time they'll be doing. Okay, and Kim, what about for you? Well, I was told by Nancy when I submitted all those three, I had the uh, illustrations done, and you know, she said you're either an author or an uh, illustrator, and I at the time, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, really, that is, I think that is true. You really are more in the, on the guilt of a writer or an illustrator. Um, so uh, what I did is uh, if I submit uh, for publishing house work uh, on my children's books, then I don't submit any illustrations because you have to justify them when you submit them, why you're submitting them, and it's just uh, it's just you know bogs the process down. So there are some books that I've written that I don't feel like I'd ever touch illustrating myself. Mm -hmm. I can't, I haven't found an illustrator that's right for them. Those I probably submit to publishing houses. Okay. Because uh, that's just kind of the way that it, it goes. There's got to be a good blend between your pictures and your, right. and your yeah. You know, and I can't stress enough to find the right illustrator. Just because yeah. they can, they're talented, does not mean you can work with them. That's and exactly right. I've right. talked with many, many authors on Facebook and in person over the telephone. Just total nightmare stories. Yeah. And it's, it's unfortunate, but it happens all too often. Yeah. I, I, definitely have to have a shared vision. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. What advice would anyone on the panel give someone who's attempting to write a children's story? My advice... So oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I, I was going to say, you know, have a clear understanding of what you're writing, why you want to write it, and understand that this is not just some, oh, I'll just write a book and put it out there and it'll sell. Mm -hmm. this, this is hard work. Have a purpose. This Have a purpose because you're going to need it to fall back on because... It's not easy to do. I would say know your audience and even envision a specific child or um, go to a school or preschool or wherever and um, look at the age level that you're looking at writing your story for. If it's a, if it's a young children's story, the adult reading that book to the child, but know your audience and, and hear, it, hear it from someone else's voice in your uh, you know, in your head as you're, as you're writing and working with it. And then I really do believe in review panels. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'd like to, I'm going to thank everyone for being on the panel. This is, we're into the last minutes of the show here. I'd like to thank my guests, Kim Wertz, uh, Jerry Begley, uh, Tanil Jackson, and KC. Uh, you can find links and information about all my guests on Aspects of Writing website at www.aspectsofwriting.com. On our next show, Tuesday, September 25th, we will talk about self-publishing, and my guest will be Kel. I'm sorry, Carolyn Howard Johnson.
uh, Patricia Fry and Valerie J. Lewis Coleman. Aspects of Writing Broadcast Live every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time here on KLAV and on the internet at www.klav1230am.com. Please keep in mind we rebroadcast every Wednesday on Vegas All Net Radio. At 8 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can also view us on video here in the studio at KLAV on YouTube immediately after this broadcast. Just go to YouTube and enter Aspects of Writing with James Kelly. For future air dates and lineups for all my shows, you can go to your computer and log on to AspectsOfWriting.com. Please sign our guest book while visiting the Aspects of Writing website. You can post uh, questions and comments on our guest book page as well, or email us directly at AspectsOfWriting.yahoo.com. Dot com. I mean, at yahoo.com. Thank you for listening to Aspects of Writing right here on Kelly V. This is your host, James Kelly, reminding you if you can dream it, you can write it. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, James. Thank you.